So today's video, we're going to talk about the GrowWatt 5000 ES and whether or not it's safe to use in North America. Currently, we have an active thread on the forum and a lot of people in the comments of my videos want some clarity to this problem. So first off, in my opinion, you should not use European or international inverters here in North America. There is a different ground and neutral designation, and I don't think it's safe for especially a beginners to try to make these inverters work here in North America. But some advanced users are finding ways to use these inverters. So you guys might be wondering, why are people doing this? And I think the only selling point is that it can be cheaper, but you need to be experienced in wiring it up, and you have to know how to ground these inverters properly because here comes the fun part they are selling GrowWatt 5000 ESs that have a ground neutral bond inside of the unit and the problem with this is it has a different designation for ground neutral when you connect to the North American grid and so you could theoretically create 120 volts on the ground of the European or international inverter and you could actually shock and kill yourself in this situation but to make matters even worse GrowWatt sells this same exact model to one distributor called Signature Solar and they do not have the ground neutral bond. But let's think about this for a second. GrowWatt 5000 ES can be purchased by Signature Solar and lots of other companies, but Signature Solar's is different. It's not the international version. Even though it has the same exact name, it's not the same exact model. So if you go to growwattamerica.com and then you look under the SPF 5000 US, you will notice that everywhere on that page, it calls it the 5000 US. This is the model that Signature Solar sells to North American markets, and it does not have a ground neutral bond inside the unit. So technically, you can find ways to safely use it if you use the right components with it and you, if you wire it correctly. But Signature Solar's units are labeled as ES, even though they're the US model. And Signature Solar says that it's GrowWatt's fault for not having accurate marketing materials for this model. So let's think about the dangers here. Let's say you buy a 5000 ES on eBay and you buy a 5000 ES through Signature Solar. You think they're the same model because they have literally the exact same sticker on both of them. But one has a ground neutral bond and the other one doesn't. So let's say you wire those up in parallel. Now let's say you connect these inverters to the North American grid. You could create 120 volts on one of the inverters case. Do you understand the problem here? That could kill someone. And they have the exact same sticker, the same model number, everything. Now if you go on growwattamerica.com, the manual under the US model is the ES. So again, you can go on their site right now and see this problem. So supposedly after the Chinese New Year break, they're supposed to fix all of these marketing materials and hopefully they'll get some stickers out to Signature Solar because it's crazy that they're selling the exact same name inverter over here with someone else over here and they're different with the bonding. That is very, very dangerous. So in my personal opinion from this whole fiasco, I'm going to avoid GrowWatt as much as possible. I know they have some very cheap inverters and they are a massive company. They sell lots and lots of inverters internationally. They're, they're huge. But personally, I don't think that this is acceptable. This is a very dangerous mistake and it could potentially kill someone. Now, when people use this inverter, they combine it with a auto transformer from Solar Edge or GrowWatt so that they can run their 120 volt loads. In theory, they're trying to run their 240 volt loads directly off of these inverters and not go through a transformer. And then for the 120 volt loads, you have an auto transformer to regulate the output voltage so you can run the small loads. But there are downsides of doing this, so I'm going to list some videos and some discussion threads below if you wanna read up on those. Um, Ian, on his channel, he made a demonstration and showed what can go wrong with this configuration. So I'm gonna list those links below and I think um, everyone should watch those. It's very useful information. Now let's talk about Signature Solar. They claim to be the only distributor of GrowWatt in North America. If you go on growwattamerica.com, the picture of the founder is on that website, right? And they claim all the other distributors are laundering them through Chinese vendors through Alibaba. And they're mad because everyone's selling their inverter 
but theirs is modified for use with North American markets. So I understand how this can become very confusing. And personally, if I was Signature Solar, I would find a way to tell people that this unit is modified. It is different than everything else on the market. Also, I told Signature Solar that the wiring diagram and the manual and everything should come with the unit whenever they ship them out. So it's not over the phone or on their website. It's like when you get this unit, you will have a manual to tell you the difference of that one to other ones on the market. I think that would be very helpful. Just one printed page to tell them everything that they need to know and that's it. It would not be hard to do. Now, personally, what I've learned from all of this is I do not trust what GrowWatt has to say when their marketing materials are not accurate. I've never had this problem with MPP or other all-in-one systems. My first MPP models were from Chinese vendors, and when I ordered the LV2424, I got the LV2424, and the manual was accurate. I could go on their website. It's very slow. I hate their website, but at least the information was accurate. On GrowWatts, you can go on their site right now, and it's not accurate. I do not like that. I don't think it's professional, especially from such a massive corporation. Next, you're not saving that much money going with GrowWatt. Like, why not go with MPP? My favorite all-in-one system right now is the LV6548. I run it 24-7, it does everything, it has UL1741, and the interface is easier to use. Like, I love that thing. And it's not that much more than the GrowWatt. Technically, you could wire up some GrowWatts for running only 240 loads and just a couple 120 volt loads for cheaper than the MPP, but personally, for safety and for ease of wiring, I'm just gonna go with it. North American MPP. Um, all of the marketing material is actually accurate and they have the certificates. So personally, I like those, they're fantastic. But something I did notice is that the grow watts that are grid tie, they have installation manuals and commissioning manuals, but for their off-grid inverters, they don't have that at all. So yeah, head over to their sites and look at them. They're very different. Why can't they just do that on the off-grid inverter? It would save people a lot of time and it would increase you know, safety if you have a proper wiring diagram for international units versus North American units, for example. And also I wanna reiterate, do not use European or international inverters here in North America, especially when it's connected to the grid. Um, if you have it off-grid and floating and you know what you're doing, um, there are some instances where you can make it work. But in my opinion, I'm not gonna use them at all. There's no point. Get the North American one. It's easier to wire up. The MPP inverters are fantastic. And yeah, it just saves you a lot of time and grief in the end. Moving forward, I'm going to be very critical of anything by GrowWatt. I think you guys should be too. Whenever you buy something from GrowWatt, go on their website, look at the marketing material, and look at the manuals. If they do not use the same words for the model name, that's a big red flag and you should probably return that thing. Also, if you wanna check out some of the discussion around this inverter, please check out the forum. There's lots of great arguments that people mentioned um, about this inverter and why you should or should not use use it. So please check that out. I'm going to have it linked below. Anyways, that's enough talking for this video. Again, do not use European and international inverters in North America. Um, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.